Good morning, Cardinal Ambrosic. Today is Thursday, January the 28th, 2021. And this morning we have some prayer requests. Uh, we continue to pray for the repose of the soul of Miss Alexandra Fru, uh, a teacher at CA, a friend to so many, a loving colleague. Uh, she leaves behind her husband, Corey, and her two beautiful children, Olivia and Edward. Uh, just wanted to let you know that Father Vito this morning will be uh, celebrating a private Mass at 8.30 a.m. for the repose of the soul of Miss Fru. Uh, as you know, we cannot gather in our parishes at this time for the public celebration of Mass. And so Father Vito yesterday uh, contacted me to let me know and to let you know, the, our Ambrosic family, that this morning at 8.30 a.m. he will be celebrating a Mass uh, for Alex. And so we're so grateful for that. Uh, let us pray uh, again uh, a prayer of rest for Alex. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May Alex rest in peace. Amen. We also continue to pray for Robert La Caprucha. As you know, uh, Miss La Caprucha is in ERW at our school, and Miss La Caprucha's uh, husband, Marco, this is uh, his uncle. Uh, he is in intensive care. Uh, he had a fall last week, um, is recovering in intensive care, but does uh, desperately need our prayers. And so we pray for Robert Lacaprucha this morning. And we also continue to pray for all of you, all of our staff and students. This has been such an incredible week for you, such a trying week uh, with the sudden and unexpected news of, of Ms. Fru's um, uh, death, uh, as well with your final grades and CPTs and all that. Um, I can't imagine uh, the, the, um, the pain, uh, the struggle this week for all of you, especially our teachers. So uh, know that you are uh, in all of our prayers, in my daily prayers, uh, and I thank you for everything that you do. This morning, I'd like to pray a prayer, or I'd like to um, pray the words of a, um, of a, a prayer that was attributed to uh, Saint Archbishop Oscar Romero. Um, uh, a liberation theologian uh, lived in El Salvador, was killed in El Salvador while celebrating Mass, really a social justice warrior. And uh, these words have been attributed to him. And they're so beautiful because they talk about vision. They talk about uh, our frailty as humans. They talk about really what we are capable of and what God ultimately is. Uh, and so... Um, I'd like to pray this, uh, given the kind of week that we've been going through, but also with our Indian Farmers Campaign, which wraps up today, and uh, a lot of the work that we had started with our anti-black racism campaign, and now moving into February with our black history, I thought this prayer would be appropriate. So please join me this morning as we pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view the kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that can be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are all about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This, enable, this enables us to do something, and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and to do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is a difference between the master builder and the worker. You see, we are workers not master builders. We are ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Amen. And now together, please join me as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. St. Teresa of Avila, pray for us. And St. Patrick, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, let us get started with our morning announcements. Cardinal Ambrosic, I would like to play first for you our final of our uh, personal testimonies uh, from uh, Nordeep Chima, a grade 12 student and a member of the Asian Heritage Committee. Uh, she'll be providing her testimony to wrap up our education piece for the Asian Heritage or for the Indian Farmers Campaign. And next week, we will be meeting with all of our castle groups to uh, inform them of the petition signing campaign for the week of February the 8th, at which time all of you will have the opportunity to sign the petition so that we can bring it forward to government. So here is Nordeep Chima's uh, reflection. My story begins by being a great-granddaughter of a farmer, a farmer who worked hard to provide for his family. I am a granddaughter of an ex-army man who reached his position due to sacrifices by his father, who was just a mere farmer. Who do you think a farmer is? A farmer is a human who provides others the food they need and carries the hope of a bright future for the coming generations. There is an injustice happening in India, an injustice of giving all the hard-earned farmers' money in private corporations' hands. The bill passed in India in September 2020 provides the right to private corporations to gain profit from the crops that farmers will sell. If this bill passes, the commission agents and the state government and many other small businesses will lose a significant revenue source and farmers will get much better prices and cost-cutting transportation. However, many farmers previously didn't get the minimum support price for their crops as guaranteed by the government and are already in debt. Removing these protections makes it easier for private corporations to enter and completely buy them out. Sometimes I think what my grandfather's brother, who is also a farmer, will be thinking about the situation. Is his future on shaky ground? Will he be able to live his life without anxiety, the anxiety of having no protection over his crops? My relatives and many others sitting in a small straw hut in Assam or a, in a bungalow in Delhi all share the same thoughts. Everyone will be affected and everything will be affected. Our rights, voices, testimonies, emotions and connections can make a difference worth fighting for a mere human who is also a farmer. To get more information on this cause, you can follow the hashtags I support farmers and farmers protest and at the same time support this cause by sharing these hashtags. And much better by signing a petition which will be released in early February. Together, let's start an echo that can reach India and can lead to its bright future. Excellent. And uh, that was from Nordeep Chima. Thank you so much, Nordeep. What an excellent uh, testimony to uh, end the education piece of our campaign. And so, yes, I look forward to the petition which will be coming out the week of February the 8th. And as I said, next week we will be contacting all of our castle groups and uh, sharing with them uh, this exciting petition and asking for their support and then asking for the school and staff support as well uh, the week of February the 8th. Uh, it is our Virtue of the Month uh, announcement. And as you know, this uh, month is self-control and decision-making. And a Google nomination form has been posted all week. I'm going to post it again today and tomorrow. You only have two more days to get in your names. Uh, currently, we have close to 40 names submitted, and we would like way more, a lot more. If you know of anyone who has uh, lived out this virtue of self-control and decision-making, and I will tell you, a few teachers' names even made it on the list. Um, you know, we, we want to recognize our students, of course, but hey, if a teacher makes the list, I'm just saying, hey, we might be able to even give a teacher an award, but um, certainly, uh, please, you have two days remaining. Uh, teachers, I will include the link again today for the Google nomination form. Please ensure that all students receive that. And just take a couple minutes. It's just three questions uh, asking for a name, um, 
uh, how they've lived out the, the, uh, the, the virtue, and then highlighting a few of the points. And so if you can do that, take a few minutes today, teachers, I'd greatly appreciate that. And we will announce the winner next week with a prize. Uh, also, today is uh, Bell Let's Talk Day. Uh, and you've probably already uh, woken up to seeing this all over social media. Uh, it's mental health awareness. And I think it's important that we, uh, we talk about our mental health and we not be afraid to talk about it. Um, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, there's been that one statement, it's okay to not be okay. And it's true. Uh, I know in my own family, my mother has suffered from depression most of her life. Um, my brother has struggled with it. Um, there's even been moments where I felt that uh, I was, you know, um, not doing great and wondering, gosh, do I suffer from it? Um, the point being that we should all be aware of our mental health and, uh, and that if we recognize that something is not right, to go and speak to someone. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, and young people do this best, our students do this best, uh, when they have um, difficulty, they immediately speak to their peers. And uh, usually as adults, we find out a lot of information through, through you, through the students. So don't be afraid to talk to someone. Uh, please do. Uh, it's Bell Let's Talk Day. If you can hashtag it today, Bell Let's Talk uh, Day, please do. And um, yes, uh, please know that there's myself, there's Miss Jones, there's Mr. Fullen, there's the main office. Uh, actually, the best counselors, uh, let's be honest, are your teachers because they see you every day. So please, please, please do reach out uh, regarding your mental health. And today, like I said, let's celebrate mental health awareness. Uh, tomorrow uh, is Friday, and so we will be praying as we do each and every week, the Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3 p.m. That's at Ambrosic Chaplaincy, and it's just a wonderful way to end our week, a uh, wonderful way to end our day. Uh, we will certainly be thinking a lot of Miss Fruit tomorrow when we pray that. And the Divine Mercy Chaplet reveals to us God's mercy and how God wants to freely give us of His mercy and how God loves us. There is nothing we can do that will separate us from God's love. And so please join us. It's a 10-minute prayer, really not long at all. And um, uh, it affirms God's love for us and, and, and the mercy that He wishes to pre freely provide us. And finally, we end this morning uh, with... Um, Information for Miss Frew's uh, funeral. Uh, so uh, there is a funeral link that I will provide as well uh, for morning announcements. Uh, she will be, or the funeral is scheduled for Tuesday, February the 2nd at 2 p.m. And the great news is it will be live streamed. So there will be a live stream of the funeral link uh, or of the funeral for Alex. I will provide that link as well today. Uh, certainly it's not open now, but it will be open Tuesday, February the 2nd at 2 p.m. And it's with Jones Funeral Home. Um, so um, please, uh, if you can attend virtually, that would be great. Again, it's Tuesday, February the 2nd at 2 p.m. And I will provide that link for you. A little lengthy this morning, Cardinal Ambrosic, but that's okay. It's been uh, one of those weeks. And so let us continue to uh, pray together, move forward together. Um, recognize, as so beautifully said by St. Uh, Oscar Romero, uh, that we are only part of the process and we can only do our best and our part. Uh, let's leave the rest up to God. Let's let God do the rest. Cardinal Ambrosic, have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless you and we will see you tomorrow.